It is so peaceful to begin our worship with such a beautiful flute solo. Grace and peace to all of you. I'm Pastor Hannah and along with all our worship leaders, I would like to extend the warmest welcome to all of you to our online worship service at Community United Methodist Church. Today we celebrate Ascension Sunday. It is an ecumenical day and we join many Christians from different denominations and different traditions to celebrate this day together to remember Jesus' final departure from our earth. So it is a day of celebration, but at the same time, as we continue our shelter in place, we do recognize that it's been very difficult for many of us. And at the same time, we also have experienced human resilience in such a powerful way during this time for which we give thanks to God. So we gather together as the body of Christ, knowing that no matter where we are, we're all connected through Christ. Let us begin our service as we sing together our opening song, Gather Us In. Join me in the opening prayer. Let us pray. Lord of amazing visions, prepare our hearts and our spirit this day to receive your glad tidings of an advocate. Help make us ready to be your disciples in all that we do, say, and think. For we ask this in the name of our beloved Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello to all and happy Sunday. Please stand if you are able. Greet those who are in the room with you. 
And don't forget on live chat to blow your kisses and give your air hugs. Peace of Christ be with you. Today I'm going to put away my Easter decorations. Do you remember when Easter was? It was a while ago, right? We may not remember the exact date, but it was well over a month ago. And I'm finally ready to put them away. So I'm putting away my uh, egg, Easter egg baskets. A couple of those. And another one. And my favorite was Easter Bunny here. Oh, our Daisy is joining us here too. <laughs> Easter bunnies, they are going to go away. Uh, Daisy, Daisy. <laughs> um, and one of my favorite is my Easter tree. So I'm going to put this away until next year too. So I'm putting away uh, Easter decorations today. Uh, not Daisy. Not just because, come here, Sita. Not just because um, uh, it's about time to put this away, but uh, because we are entering into a new season at the church. So the Easter season, uh, and then the what's coming up next is uh, today is Ascension Sunday, and today we remember that after Jesus was resurrected. He spent 40 days with his disciples and then he went to heaven. Um, and then we also remember that he, before he left, he promised that he's going to give all people a very special gift. And do you know what it is? Hmm. We'll find it out next Sunday. Because uh, next Sunday is a special celebration of that gift that Jesus is giving us to help us to know that even though Jesus is not with us, Jesus is with us in this very special way with his gift. So uh, today let us remember that Easter is just not one day celebration for us, but it is a season of 40 days to celebrate. See you next week. The scripture reading for today is taken from Acts chapter 1 verses 6 through 14. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or period that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs 
where they were saying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I can see the clouds rolling. I can feel the winds, they try to shake me. I will not be moved. My feet are on the rock. I can feel the waters rise. I can hear the howling flies that haunt me. Fear won't hold me now. My feet are on the rock. When I feel my hope about to break, I will cling to your unchanging grace. Let the waters go. Solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. I'm Christ, a solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. I'm Christ, a solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. When I feel my own Good morning. What have you done over the last 40 days since Easter besides waiting for the stay at home order and COVID-19 to end? Many of us have filled our days by watching TV, Netflix, and catch up with some movies and doing puzzles and crosswords. Some of us have spent time reading and taking walks. Most of us have not done all the hard things we thought we would do, like reorganizing closet and cleaning up the basement. You know, Jesus' ascension took place 40 days after Easter. And during these 40 days, Jesus didn't just sit around and wait, but was busy preparing for his ascension. Jesus visited every one of the disciples, everyone, ate with them, comforted them, and encouraged them. He gave them a hope to move forward, talked to them about the kingdom of God, prayed for them, and gave them the last order, which was to wait for the promise of the Father, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The group had to come together on the mountain, not too far from the Jerusalem. 
It was the last time. And Jesus gathered his disciples together to say goodbye. The disciples still didn't understand that Jesus was about to leave them. So they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? They were asking about something unknown in the future. Jesus said, no one knows except God when the kingdom will come and kingdom will be restored. But what you need to do now is to receive the power of Holy Spirit so that you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Then Jesus ascended into a crowd. Two men in white robe appeared and told the disciples that Jesus would return one day, just as they have seen him go into heaven. Although this event of ascension is not well known, but it is very important event because it is a transitional event that links the end of one chapter to the beginning of another chapter. A chapter toward the unknown future, the future of the new earth and the new heaven. The disciples didn't know they were going to, going into the new era of the Holy Spirit, but they followed the order and gathered together and waited. I don't know about you, but waiting is hard. How many of you agree with me? I can see some heads nodding. Yes. You know, there are so many different levels of waiting. Some waiting is easier than others. Waiting for packets is easy because you know it will come within a certain time frame. There are places you shouldn't go or you should avoid if you hate waiting. Like DMV, drive, driver license place, it is always packed. At the social security office, you have to wait even if you have an appointment, right? And at the immigration office, I don't know if you've been to, but I have been to twice. But they work at their own pace. They don't care how long you have waited. When lunchtime comes, they close their windows and go to lunch. It all sounds terrible, right? But that is not the worst kind of waiting. Waiting for something unknown and uncertain is worse. So we are in a time of waiting. We wait for the release of the stay at home order. We wait for a vaccine and no one can tell us when one will be available. And we wait for everything to return to normal. But we don't know if, if, if things will ever get back to normal. So waiting can be very tough. Jesus' Jesus's disciples were told to wait for the, for the Holy Spirit. They didn't even know what the Holy Spirit was and what it was like. What to expect when it comes? Or how to receive it? They didn't know how long they would have to wait. They had no idea. But they went to the city of Jerusalem. They must have stayed at a large place, which could accommodate 120 people gathering together. You know, they didn't just sit around wasting time. If we look look at uh, verse 14, it says, The disciples were constantly devoting themselves to prayer. They didn't wait passively, but actively. They learned well from Jesus. When things were uncertain or unknown, they prayed. I wonder how they did 
uh, devoted themselves to prayer. For some of us, praying for more than five minutes is difficult. I don't think they repeated the Lord's Prayer all day long. You know, throughout the centuries, different kinds of prayer have developed and we have adopted many of them. As you know, prayer is a channel of communication with God. We speak and we listen. I learned how to pray in a Korean church setting. I was a teenager and back then I went to a church for an early morning prayer gathering where we sang a hymn and heard a short message from the pastor that we were invited to pray freely in our seats or go to the front or on the altar place and kneel and pray and on Friday nights we had an overnight prayer meeting where we sing a praise songs and hymns and did what what we call a tong song kido. It means to pray out loud in one voice, all together. So we often pray together for churches, for missions, and for each other. And then we sing again and listen to the message and we prayed again. Then after the official service was over, we prayed individually. Sometimes we fall asleep on the altar area and then got up in the middle of the night and to pray again. In the morning, we joined the morning prayer service before we went home. To think about it, I think I was very devoted in prayer back then. You know, I'm not suggesting that we all do that now, but at, time, but at that time, it helped me a lot during my walk with Jesus. But I do want to suggest that we find time to devote, devote ourselves to some kind of prayer during this time of waiting. Prayer enables us to center ourselves on God and connect with God by talking and listening and experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit. Take a look at this picture. What do you think this is? It is a uh, praying chair. You wonder how it works, right? Look at this picture. This is how it works. You kneel down like, like that. So, you, uh, so that when you kneel next to your bed or some other quiet place, your feet won't go to a sleep. Even if you pray for more than an hour, I built this chair 11 years ago during my seminary years. Not for me though, but for my wife on her birthday. So she will pray for me. And take a look at this picture. What do you think this is? It is a prayer stool and a desk. This is John Wesley's prayer stool and desk that he used every morning when he prayed and read scripture for two hours. I took this picture in 2016 when I went on a Wesley pilgrimage tour. This is one of the things that inspired me during the pilgrimage. I prayed every morning and evening during the tour. And recently, I told our confidence to start by praying five times a day with a few simple words. Thank you, God. I told them to pray in the morning, at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and before I go to bed. I also suggest that after a few weeks or month, they could add more words to thank you, God. The point is not that we pray a long prayer, but that we acknowledge that God is with us all the time. During this time when we have stay at home order and an unknown future, I believe the best things we can do is to pray. Pray. There is no limitation on prayer. 
You see, we don't need to leave our home to pray. We can pray anywhere. And you can pray in your bedroom, at the kitchen table, or sitting in your favorite comfy chair. There's no place that prayers can't reach. Your prayer can reach the end of the earth. The most important part is that you will receive power from the Holy Spirit so that you can be a witness to Jesus. And being a witness to Jesus means that you show God's love to other people. The power of the Holy Spirit is not that you get to speak in tongues or drive out demons. It is a changing of the heart. To our youth and children, I want to say that the power of the Holy Spirit will make you want to help others, to do things like doing the dishes without asking, and playing nicely with your siblings. From my experience, prayer causes you to willingly do lots of things that you wouldn't normally do. You pick up a phone and call others. You encourage others on a Facebook. You no longer think just about yourself, but others too. I think that is the power. The power comes from the Holy Spirit and through prayer. You know, that prayer makes our faith active in our lives. So every time that you do something, you should start with a prayer. The asking, inviting the Holy Spirit to come and do something differently than what you would do. What we should do here and now is wait in prayer instead of worrying about the future. Through prayer, we can find the courage to face the unknown future. I believe that during prayer, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and empower you to do all things, including being witnesses for Jesus in our family, in our community, in our nation, and to every corner of the earth. Amen.
Our prayer today is offered in honor of Memorial Day. And let us pray with the words of Austin Fleming. Let us pray. O gracious and loving God, who created us, who sustain us, who call us to live in peace, hear our prayer this day. Hear our prayer for all who have died, whose hearts and hopes are known to you alone. Hear our prayer for those who put the welfare of others ahead of their own and give us hearts as generous as theirs. Hear our prayer for those who gave their lives in the service of others and accept the gift of their sacrifice. Help us to shape and make a world where, where we will lay down the weapons of war and turn our swords into plowshares and a harvest of justice and peace. Comfort those who grieve the loss of their loved ones and let your healing be the hope in our hearts. Hear our prayer this day and may your peace be with us all. And let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, sins as we forgive those who sit against us. And lead us not to temptation, but to us from an evil. And thy kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. Hello, church. My name is Chris DeMarco. Um, you might have seen me uh, singing either in video form or in person in the, this past year uh, as me and my wife first moved to the church. And today I've had the privilege of sharing with you a couple of my personal convictions and philosophies about faith and worship. And please recognize that I'm not a theologian, but these are things that I do feel very strongly about. Uh, to be a true servant of Christ, all focus on myself must be discarded. That means in tithing, uh, worshiping, preaching, speaking at all, and anything that I do, it must move away from myself. Uh, and the reason the American church currently is so deluded, because it is, and in fact it's been such an abetter of evil deeds, is because so many pastors and indeed worship leaders have made uh, the promulgation of the gospel all about their own self-importance. and. I say this because there are very few pastors willing to speak the truth to their congregations about the sacrifice required as Christians, which is uh, the opposite of American Christian culture, which we know uh, very well. My goal has always been to do all my good deeds and all my devotion in near secrecy because this way I never have to be tempted uh, or afraid of being seduced into self-worship by the public eye, no matter how fervently I claim to cloak it in religious piety. Uh, because it's the mandate of our Lord uh, to be vessels and nothing more on this earth. And if anything is to be salvaged from the wreckage that is the Christian church, uh, then the pastors and worship leaders of whom I speak, they should look perhaps to the most recognized musical genius of all time. Uh, Johann Sebastian Bach notated SDG, the letters SDG, on every finished uh, work that he approved of, uh, which in Latin is Soli Deo Gloria. And this reflected his personal belief that for all his genius, for all his magnificence, everything reflects back to the Lord. If they were to see this and take inspiration from it truly, then the American church might actually be a force for good. And it's my personal charge to remain as humble and un as unrecognized as possible in the utilization of my gifts in order to stem the tide of nihilistic gluttony that plagues our Christian society. Thank you for listening, and God bless you. God has given us so much, and our offering is time when we can give back to God. One of the best gifts we can give is our presence, so please enter your attendance during this time. The link to attendance is oncumc.net slash attendance.
Thank you also for your generous financial support to our church. There are several ways to give. Uh, you can send your check to the church directly, or you can give online at 1cumc.net slash donate. Or you can set up an automatic transfer with your bank. Let us give generously and joyfully. Let us pray. Loving God, you pour out your grace upon us without reservation. Help us to be as gracious and generous with our gifts and resources so others might know your hope, your healing, and your presence in their lives. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's been so good to have you in our worship today. If you're here for the very first time, please check us out on our website at 1cumc.net. Community United Methodist Church is a church for people of all ages, and we are very committed to creating a community for all people no matter where we are or where we're from or who we are. So if you haven't signed in yet, please enter your attendance using the attendance link below the screen. And your presence is so important and we'd love to know that you're here with us today. And if you have any questions about the church or have a prayer request, please let us know. You can send us an email to the email address in the description box below. Now, next Sunday is 
Pentecost Sunday, it is a celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit. We will be worshiping at our homes again, but we will celebrate the Spirit which unites us all together. So as a symbolic act for that, I would like to encourage you to wear anything that has the color of the fire, which is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Red, orange, or yellow, uh, any color of fire will be great so that we will know that even though we are scattered around, uh, we are all united in God's Holy Spirit. We look forward to seeing you in our worship next Sunday. And now let us join in singing our closing song, Yesu, Yesu. Clap your hands, all you people. Sing to God with song of joy. Go forth praising God who reigns on high. Go forth to pray for all the people. For God is with us. Go in peace. Amen.